a lot like our wood chips. Right? That's ridiculous. That looks like the mulch in the back of the yeah, truck. It is. I feel like I'm about 20 years too old to be doing this as a science experiment. <laughs> it says anywhere from one month to 60 years. It doesn't You're good. have an age range, so. I can already tell you this needs a name. Oh yeah, one more thing to feed. I couldn't resist, guys. I was looking for some mushroom spawn for a completely different project, and I saw these indoor mushroom growing kits, and I was completely sold. So this is the King Strophoria, Strophoria mushroom patch. And if all goes well, we should start having mushrooms in our house in about four weeks. And over the lifetime of this kit, it should produce about one to two pounds of mushrooms, which isn't much, except the idea is when this has outlived its life in the house, we can transfer it outside where if cared for properly, it can continue to make mushrooms for years. I'm beyond stoked. This is a humidity dome. Where should we put it? A little farther than it is toward it wants the middle of the, the table. The temperature is between 60 and 80 degrees. We're 68 in here. Nailed it. It doesn't want direct light and it doesn't want pitch black. This looks like a great spot. Potatoes, meet mycelium. Mycelium, meet potatoes. My thinking is probably reverse this, but we'll start potatoes maybe down there and come as far as we can with the potatoes. And then over here, we're gonna do lettuce, beets, and green onions. What do we wanna work on first, carrots? Um, I'm thinking probably work on this section first. Oh, okay. Cause that we can do now. The potatoes aren't ready. We have to cut them up into pieces. Okay, gotcha. So you wanna go three and then six and then six and then six and then six and, and six three. and three. And you said furrows. So do you want me cool. just to grab the rake and we'll just smooth this out real quick? Cause it's really lumpy. Um, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Nice. Where'd you get that? It's attached to our rake. Sweet. Not about perfection. Lettuce doesn't know. Romaine in the first row. Okay. And then every other row is going to be romaine. Okay. So we'll have three rows of romaine. Okay. And then between them, we'll plant the other varieties. So we have arugula, red salad bowl, and then mixed greens, which we don't have because I forgot to order them. Okay, got it. <laughs> it's going to be so fun for that to come up. Holy smokes. We're going to have our very first row of lettuce. Done. It's pretty good. So that's two rows of, of romaine. Believe it or not, this is our very first year attempting planting lettuce. And to be honest, I think the reason we haven't done it before is because it's intimidated me. We've never really gotten into or tried out succession planting. This idea where you stagger your planting so that you have produce year round versus all of it coming to maturity at the same time. And that's not really a problem with things you can preserve, but lettuce, I don't know about you, I don't know how to preserve lettuce. But we've come across this idea called cut and come again, where some vegetables, you don't have to harvest the whole plant. You can just cut it at the base and it grows back, right? Isn't that cool? So I know that a lot of people have been doing this successfully with lettuce. That's kind of the push that I needed to go ahead and work this into our garden. But what people are doing, instead of being 
overly OCD about the spacing of each seedling and then thinning them out like you would do if you're trying to grow heads of lettuce, you're able to plant them a little bit more densely because you're not trying to get mature plants and the stronger ones will kind of weed out the thinner ones. So all of these seeds I believe are new except the red lettuce that you're planting right now. Mm, okay. And if you guys remember back a video we did, um, I actually tested the germination rate on a lot of our seedlings. Oh, I remember that. This one I did off camera, but it's over 50%. They're still viable. Okay. So that's why I'm excited to plant them. And to be honest, I like the color purple. I think it's going to look really nice oh, in there. This, this is going to be pleasant just to look at. It's I know. It's kind of like our own little micro farm. Like when I see rows of produce, I just think of a farm and it makes me yep. happy. It thinks me, makes me think of driving through Southern California and all the like rich farm pasture land that's down there. We installed our watering system yesterday and we have six inches between our rows of lettuce and these soaker hoses should wick out probably between eight and 12 inches. Oh yeah. So we haven't thoroughly tested it, but these three quarter inch soaker hoses should be enough to get this whole bed wet. And that's kind of another anxiety I had with planting something so broad like this is how do you get it all wet? Mm -hmm. Because last year we only had two soaker hoses and stuff on the outsides wasn't getting no love. I'm willing to risk my reputation, what little reputation I have as a gardener, that the roots will figure it out. They're smart yep. roots. We didn't buy dumb root plants, we bought smart root plants and where we put water, the plants will figure it out. If not, we'll add more water. <laughs> So here's like a stupid, total rookie novice gardener question. It never dawned on me that the way we buy produce in the store is basically dumb. Like buying a head of lettuce is dumb because you've just uprooted the whole plant. When if you well, buy like leafy, like salad mix, you could in theory have a head of lettuce that just keeps producing and you keep cutting and you buy the mix, but you don't kill the plant. But we go in and buy mm -hmm. the whole doggone thing and they cut the roots off it. Or am I like way you crazy? You know, I, on first thought, I might agree, but on second thought, I feel that on larger commercial farms, things are just a little different yeah. than a home garden. Right. Like I mean, on a commercial farm, they have very, very different equipment, very different harvesting methods. You know, they're selling large batches at a time. Makes sense. So. I think in a lot of my research, I've learned that on seed company websites, a lot of them, a lot, a lot of the instructions are kind of speaking to more commercial farmers. So if it says plant your seeds this far apart and space your rows three feet apart, well, that's not very practical for a home garden with raised beds, where if you listen, if you follow the instructions of the seed packet, you're only going to get one row of plants. So that's what a lot of other home gardeners are doing is more the high density gardening method where you're able to put more in the space of your garden. And that's kind of another thing that has intimidated me as a new gardener is really trying to figure out how do we maximize the bed space we have because we want to get more than two rows of produce in here. I brought out these garden markers. We don't want to get confused about what's what. Right, so each row, maybe let's just label it. Yeah. Learn something about garden markers. You should start at this end. Right, I already your, learned that lesson. And write your way when down. When I wasn't smarter than you, I just learned it sooner. <laughs> so now the stinking markers won't go in because I stuck them up too high. That'll work. Yep. They're not going away anywhere. I haven't planted this yet, but we'll pretend like oh, yeah. we have. Does it feel good to work in the garden? You don't get to work on the garden much. I don't. And this feels You're always really, working on it's really fun. more important things. I mean, different things. Different things, <laughs> not more important. It's all important. That's the problem is it's like, it's all important. What do you work on? Today? At the Everything. end of the day, nothing's more important than food, but we also live in. Yeah. If we could just work on the garden all day, that would be awesome, yep. but it's not rational. But I love that, that we can work as a team. And in the end, like our property is just becoming this like, beast of of life and family and food and work and i don't know pretty terrible life really i don't know who would want to live like this this is this is garbage we should move back to the city if you guys watched the video where i did the master plan for the garden this year in a spreadsheet i lined out everything that we're going to plant whether we start the seed indoors or we direct sow the seed and then the date that that needs to happen that way it takes all the thinking out of starting our garden and all we have to do is follow our calendar a lot of seed packets give you a recommendation on when to start the seeds indoors and that usually counts back from your frost date so say three to four weeks before the date of your average last frost. But then there's other vegetables where 
they say it's ideal to direct sow them as soon as the soil is workable. I mean, I could like scratch in our soil like in February. But I think what that means, it's, it's plants that once they come up, they're fairly cold hardy and they're frost tolerant. So things that are recommended to start as soon as the soil is workable are what we're starting today. And then doing further research, some websites say as soon as the soil is workable or roughly about 50 degrees. So guess what? I bought a soil thermometer. Let's check the temperature of our soil just for fun. Is this a... Ear, forehead. Kind of looks like my cappuccino thermometer, but like on steroids, <laughs> like you're really serious about cappuccinos. So I did this the other day and our soil was right around 50 degrees. What did we learn? When is it, when, when is morel season? I think that's also when the soil temperature reaches about 50 degrees, right? Something like that. Yeah, there's a, definitely a soil temperature mm -hmm. correlation. I don't, I don't know if it was 60 or 50. So that's another reason I have this. So when we're driving along in the forest, I can ask Jesse to just let me out and I can, you know, check soil temperature. I mean, things normal Americans do, right? right. Is she peeing over there? No, she's checking the temperature <laughs> of the dirt. So this is hovering around 70. Do you believe that? In the surface, yeah. I the mean, it's pretty, it. it's pretty warm. I believe it's 70 in the surface. Push it deeper. I can't, there's wood under there. <laughs> Different bed with less wood in it. Let's try here. Ah, there we go. That's immediately dropping the temp. Go baby, go. If you watch our seed starting setup video, you'll see that we have space to start quite a few seeds indoors, but we can't start everything indoors. So, and deciding what we wanted to start versus what we wanted to direct So you can pretty much start anything indoors and get a jump start on the season, but carrots, for example, are something that are better to direct So because the vegetable is the root. And if you uproot it, there's a good chance you're gonna either damage that root or at least make it weird shaped. So if you really care about carrots that grow straight down, that's something that you're gonna wanna direct sow in the garden. But if you like those carrots that you see on Facebook, like intimate carrots, the ones that look like they're hugging. carrots that look like they're hugging each other, maybe you do wanna start them indoors. So again, it just kinda depends on what you want and how much space you have. So we're still hovering at 60, but we've had really, really warm temperatures. So I'll go with that. How's the beet planting going? Good. This is not too bad. Um, yeah, those seeds are a little bigger. Yeah, big seeds. Much, much more obvious what you're, you're planting. And didn't somebody, what was it people were saying were like five seeds in one? Yeah, let beets. me see those seeds. So what's funny, when we did our germination rate, I said, is it possible that we have more sprouts than seeds? And people told me yes, because apparently there's a bunch of little seeds in each seed. Yeah, it's like a pod or something more than it's a seed. So. Right, so that's news to me. So planting two seeds, you're actually planting You're actually like really 10. increasing your odds, yeah. Yeah, so it didn't, it had like a wave. Somehow it had more than 100% germination rate. Maybe it's too late for this. Uh-oh. But we're thinking we're gonna stagger these. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I think that that makes up our mind for us. Maybe uh, it's not meant to be. I could do that. Yeah, they're big seeds, so I can pick them up. So that's what we're thinking is that we're going to maybe stagger each row by like three weeks. And in theory, maybe we have beets to eat all season. Yeah. But part of me doesn't want to do that because then for weeks you have unused bed space. Yeah, dumb question. So, like, say you pick a row, can you plant in that same row again? and grow another harvest? Once you uproot them. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you could get like a couple harvests per row in theory, like depends on how fast they grow or whatever, right? Right, so like I mean, eventually. Oh, 60 days. Hopefully every, well, So we get yeah. three, we could get three harvests or so, give or take, because we have about a six month growing season, mm -hmm. something like that. So I think that makes sense. I'd rather have fresh beets. These are our volunteer green onions. They came back from last year. They never really grew last year, but they're going for it this year. So this morning for breakfast, I cut them down to the nubbin. We're gonna see if they grow back. And if they do, then I'm not gonna deal with this whole succession planting of our green onions, because frankly, it sounds like a pain in the butt to me. But just to further this case study, again, about every three weeks, we're gonna start probably five bunches of green onions indoors, and then transplant them out to the garden, because that's another thing that you can't really preserve and we love green onions there's there's pretty much nothing that they're not good with except maybe ice cream I think there's a little bit of work to do before we can plant the potatoes which in my opinion needs to happen next so if you want I can kind of work on that and take over this 
And yeah. you can work on mulch. I'll work on the <laughs> mulch project. Works for me. Jesse thinks he ran over you guys. Huh? I don't think you made it back this far, did you? No, looks like you guys made it. I heard a big loud crunch <laughs> and I didn't know what it was. And I like, it usually is followed by like, what could that be? Uh oh. Right, we'll find out. <laughs> and it's usually on the little camera, guys. It's Sorry. still rolling. Yeah, that's a good sign. So here you go. I expected to find, oh, it's probably the plywood. I expected to find camera pieces. Good to see you guys are intact. Hopefully you guys are all toughened up and ready for work season because cameras falling is a pretty normal thing around here. Well, that wasn't as bad as I thought. So these seed potatoes came to us. They were back ordered until the 1st of April. And when they came, there were no sprouts on them at all. So the process of sprouting a potato is called chitting. I chit you not. And when you plant potatoes, you can either plant the entire seed potato as a whole, or you can cut them up having a couple of eyes per potato, which is what we decided to do. Otherwise, we wouldn't have enough. There's a lot of controversy over what the right way is. At the end of the day, they both seem to work. We're taking a risk and we're doing pretty high density planting with these. We'll see how they turn out. But this is nice. That's all of our seed potatoes. Most of them, we just cut them in half. And now we can proceed with planting the carrots. That's a great spot for the mulch. Yeah, keep it close to the garden. It's out of the way. This bed's a little bit more challenging for our carrot seedlings because we have our solar panels, which I don't think they're hooked up right now. So we'll probably move them because they're gonna shade the tender little carrot seedlings, which we don't want. But I think to avoid moving them now, I'm gonna plant our first row of carrots closest to me and like we're doing with the beets we're gonna dagger these plantings probably two or three weeks apart in the hopes that we have fresh carrots to eat all season long <laughs>
All done on my side. Nice. I'm just finishing. What are you planting there? Peas, sugar snap. Ooh, do we have to trellis those? I don't know. Gotcha. I think, but this is the perfect spot to do it. True. We can always put that trellis thing in a jigger that we have from last year over here. Yeah, or do something. I mean, something. we'll wait for them to grow first, but. I'm kind of silly. I, for some reason, thought that uh, sunflowers needed a trellis. So that's why I put the trellis where I did last right. year. Anyway. They did use it, I think. I think this grew around it and then it got to be like in the way. Well, yeah, oh, well. we hope to grow those again in the same spot. Yep. But yeah, it's pretty good. I say we turn that's the it. water system on for a little bit to kind of oh, like yeah. soak everything, you know? Well, yeah, we could turn on for a little while. It's supposed to rain like the Dickens oh. tonight and tomorrow. So I say wait then. Let's not waste our water if we don't have to. I agree. We Let's... shouldn't have to do much watering like we do have rain in the forecast. Oh yeah, it's spring. <laughs> so I say just until seedlings emerge, it's important to keep the soil moist. So probably just... Well, we can wet it for a little bit tonight and then we'll see what the weather does tomorrow. That way, if it doesn't turn out to rain like they think it's going to... Well, if it doesn't, bit. we'll just water it. I say just hold out for rain. Okay. I'm all about saving water. Yep. Even though we have a well, it's a bit of a hump to but get we're water. we're at 78%. That's three quarters of the way down. Uh, so. It's because of Bugaboo. Bugaboo's taking too long of hot showers. Yep. Cool. So we got peas, carrots, potatoes, peas, carrots, potatoes, lettuce, beets, and, and lettuce. beets and lettuce. That's all pretty good. I'd say today. we have 50% percent of the garden planted most and of the its transplants, transplants are right? gonna be like ridiculously easy so i'm excited nice work this thing's gonna be this, a legit garden watch this out our plan was to just be ahead of everything and I, I i think we're we're on schedule this is good we tried to be ahead so that we're on schedule the right? beautiful thing is everything that you've done this year can just be basically like tweaked and improved next year so this isn't all about like creating one heck of a garden for one year this is like laying the foundation for an awesome garden next year right and every year you just decide like was yeah. that enough should i plant more was it overcrowded could yep. i have like doubled up on my spacing yep this is good so i'm excited I think over the next week we'll see some stuff coming up. Oh yeah. Especially if we have the rain sun, rain sun, and like 70 degree temperatures, right? Well, if last year's any indication, we're about to get triple digits for a month and Ooh. then we'll cool off in June back right. to like April temperatures. <laughs> I don't know. I'm ready for it. 